Hello everyone, can you believe it? It's December. Um, I'm going to try not to mention the COVID word, but um, I am getting a, a sort of a deja feeling, or deja vu feeling even, that um, well, here we go again. Please God I'm wrong on that. But anyway, so what I will talk about today is, well, what's happened in the property market in the last year, um, solutions that have been brought forward, and maybe then I will discuss what's happened in the mortgage market and what will you need to do to get yourself ready for next year. Okay, so what's happened in the in the property market? Well, as predicted, or as I predicted, but it wasn't, didn't need to be a genius to do so, the property prices have gone up in the last year. Um, they haven't, it hasn't exploded, but it, it, it has been a continual rise. Um, basically, simply due to lack of supply, um, the demand has gone up and the supply has gone down, which can only result in one um, well, one result, and that, that price is going up. What solutions have been put forward? Well, the government have brought a kind of a, a scheme through whereby, well, they have a they have an ambitious aim to have 300,000 houses for people in the next 10 years. Um, it's called the Housing for All scheme. As part of that, they have a new tax that will be coming out next year on a vacant property. Um, so if, you, if landlords or developers have properties that are vacant, they're going to they're going to be more they're going to be taxed to hopefully bring more supply to the market. This does remain to be seen. Their other other ideas are still being in this housing growth scheme are still haven't actually come to fruition yet. So we will reserve judgment on that for the moment. The other thing, obviously, with the help to buy scheme, well, that has been extended into two thousand and twenty two. So for anyone looking to buy a new property. That is good news. What I would be suggesting, though, is get on to the revenue as soon as January 1st comes so that you know what you'll qualify for. There'll be delays in finding that out if, if 2021 is anything to go by. Okay, so that's what's happened in the, the property market. I will be, as I say, coming back early next year to give you my thoughts on the prices for next year. But suffice to say, I don't think they're going to be falling next year. Um, so what's happened in the mortgage market? Well. Two big things, really. Well, and, and not on, on a positive note, was the announcement that both KBC and Ulster Bank were actually due to are, are due to leave the market. Now, Ulster Bank are probably further down the track in this in their agreement with Permanent TSB, and they've actually stopped taking new business for non um, Ulster Bank customers. KBC are still open for business and moving ahead, even though they have signed a an agreement of sorts with Bank of Ireland. But that is currently subject to the regulator to making sure that Bank of Ireland aren't buying too much market share. So that still has to move forward. But the, the bottom line is two banks have, uh, are looking to leave the, the market. Reason being, well, they weren't making enough money. Um, and that's a consequence of central bank not allowing them to lend as much um, based on well, what happened here in the past where the banks overlent so the, the sort of the sins of the past are, have, have come back to bite these banks and it's pretty much when it's caused two of them to leave um the other kind of more upbeat note in relation to what's happening with the banks is that well um some of them are now offering longer term fixed rates there's been a bit of a, a competitive how should i describe it um push um on these rates and the likes of avant um finance ireland are now offering 10 to 20 year fixed rates now, i'm not the biggest fan of, the, of taking that length of term fixed rate but it's certainly um more choice creates more competition which is it has to be good for the for, for the customer um so the next thing that's kind of more on a macro level on the kind of day-to-day -day level with with the banks well there was a period of time when obviously the demand was out the door where the service was shocking it was taking between four to five weeks to get a bank to say yes Thankfully, that has got a little bit better, but it's not, it certainly hasn't been fixed in any, um, well, to where I'd like it to be, but it's, it's certainly moving in the right direction. Um, obviously, exceptions then are kind of going to be the, the key, the buzzword again at the start of next year. What you need to do to make sure you're ready? Well, literally with the banks, things that are outside your control are your salaries, okay? Because unless you move and change a job, that they are, they're not going to change. But what you can be doing to make sure that you're going to position yourself in the best possible way is making sure your bank accounts look like they're in good order, making sure that the rent that you're paying is going out of not by cash and that you're saving consistently every month. What I see people saving, thinking they're saving, 
they'd be putting money in and then they take it out and they say, well, I'm saving a thousand euro a month, but in truth, they're not. So it's really important that you have, you can demonstrate to the bank that you can meet the repayments of a mortgage that you're looking to take forward. So um, what I'm going to say now is, well, God, hopefully this time next year, we won't be mentioning the COVID world, our COVID world even, um, our COVID world is probably just as appropriate, um, but have a great Christmas, peaceful, safe, uh, and hopefully um, I, I will be coming at the start of next year with my predictions for 2022. So stay tuned. And, but in the meantime, thank you all for listening um, for the whole year. And I'm looking forward to talking to you all again in 2022. God, that sounds scary saying 2022, but I suppose that's the reality. Have a great Christmas, everyone. Bye. <laughs>